think we could listen to the radio or something? Radio? <laughs> Who needs the radio? Ready, Harry? <laughs> Mock! Yeah! Ding! Yeah! Bird! Yeah! Yeah! And welcome to the biggest show in sports. This is it Fart Talk Radio. It's time for the best damn sports talk show in the state. Here's your host, Brandon Lowe. All right, welcome into the Brandon Lowe Show with Ryan Pritt Podcast. That's what we call it here. It's the podcast. I'm Brandon podcast. Lowe. He's Ryan Pritt. He's Jack Withrow. And, uh, and this is our first. Zeke. And he's Zeke sitting over in the corner. It's our first That's one. For Wade. I'm freezing still in the studio. <laughs> I think it feels kind of nice in here today. I'm still kind of cold. Considering it's 44 degrees outside. Welcome to April. Right. How's everybody doing? How was everybody's Easter wind, uh, weekend? Good. Good? It was good. It was I warmer. Had, had an interesting story yesterday. I don't know if I want to start the pot off with it or not. Go ahead. But we're going to get ahead. there. Let's do it. Well, it's kind of a sobering moment. It would be starting on a down note. Oh, with the race yesterday? No, that oh, was, okay. no, we could definitely start on that. That's just okay. an angry Ryan's going to be funny. And <laughs> yelling Is that a call and coming on Wednesday? I don't know, man. Maybe. I've got, I got to figure out how to get through today and tomorrow. I'm not sure. It's just get through this, today this tomorrow. Time of, well, this time of year with rainouts and <laughs> softball and WU sports and all this going on, I try not to look too far ahead. But it's a good possibility. I could definitely go off. It's The only problem is I've written it before. Yeah. Yeah, I got and you. And it still sucks. <laughs> yeah. Newsflash. Well, Stock had, cars still don't belong on dirt. Well, I had Briscoe, <laughs> by the way, which it seems like every driver I pick uh, wrecks or blows their engine in this whole thing that I'm playing with you. This what was a crazy you know, last lap, though. Kyle Busch picking up win number 60 out of nowhere. And have I picked him yet? I don't I don't know, but I, I don't think I have. I, I tried to go with Larson yesterday, and I was like, well, I already picked Larson, yeah. and he blew out his engine. So Yeah, and that's, that's the whole thing, but... I don't know, dude. I mean, you had two rain delays. Here's another news flash for NASCAR. Um, it's going to be cold and rainy in Virginia and Tennessee in April. No. No way. Like last week, they were at Martinsville. They have this big night race. It's going to be this big new thing, and it's 34 degrees, and nobody goes. And this week, they're at Bristol, Tennessee, and who could have ever imagined it rained twice with dirt. during the race with dirt on the track. That's always fun. That works yeah. out before, by the way, last season. Yes, and if you And, oh, by the way – and again, just being completely out of touch with your fan base. So NASCAR decides it's a good idea to run a race on Easter night. Yeah. In the South. Yeah. Guys, just, I mean, I'm not trying to be stereotypical here but at come all. Come on. Come on. But your target audience <laughs> in the South, probably doing some church things, mm-hmm. probably doing some family things. Mm-hmm. It was the first time since 1989 NASCAR ran a race on Easter. There's, really? a, reason, there's a reason that day has always been off. Leave it alone. Why wouldn't you just run it on Saturday night? It would have made more sense. You don't really have anything going on. And then, you know, I mean, you have the NBA playoffs, but I don't know who how cares you feel about, about that. that. But, yeah, I, know. I didn't even know those were going on until you tweeted something out about it yesterday. That was actually a really, really good game between the Nets and the I'm and sure the there was a lot of great defense but involved. I, I know. I know. You know, you're feeling about the NBA. <laughs> Both teams shot 78% from the floor. It was awesome. Anyway, Jack, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> what's up with UC, man? You Jack, see? the producer, the magician, the guy that makes it all go on here on the show, the voice of UC Athletics. Yeah, that's me. What's up, dude? I make it all one. go. He got a good one he was telling me about before he got here. Oh, really? Yeah. What's up? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, had some good pitching from UC baseball mm-hmm. this week. Uh, had a, Almost had a perfect game on Friday. Nice. Got broken up in the seventh. Uh, mm. Uh, Ethan Soderna, uh, graduate student, came in here and um, threw 12 strikeouts. Wow. Uh, and then a Saturday, the game one starter on Saturday, threw a no-hitter. So wow. Colt, nice. Colt Webb. Nice. Six-foot-five, 230-pounder, was bringing it. Small boy. Yeah. It's a wee little man so, there, six and five. Yeah. So, he got a no-hitter on Saturday for UC. So it was good pretty for cool. him, man. Yeah. So as Jack was watching a perfecto get broken up in the seventh inning on Friday, so was I. How weird is that? I was in Buffalo watching Morgan Cooper from Man taking a perfecto into the seventh inning. Nice. Gives up Although a bone single out, and then throws three straight wild pitches and Buffalo wins one nothing. <laughs> it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I Got was to- watching a no hitter in Major League uh, Baseball, Dodgers, and they pulled him in the eighth. 
Welcome to modern day baseball. I was like, what are we doing? But I get it. They didn't have any spring training. Right. Yeah, the short yeah, get, spring I training. It, I get it. But it was just like, what are we doing? You get all the old old folks coming out. Back in my day, guys used to throw 500 innings a year. <laughs> okay. Just calm down, everybody. I, I, I guess just for me as a fan watching that, I was just like, man, I really wanted to see a no-hitter. But I, mean, I get it. If Kershaw is cool with it, I'm He cool was. He was yeah, very he was, cool, he was cool with it. That's my point. Yeah. Like He would be the only guy I would worry about being mad, and he – yeah, he was fine. Just whatever, we won the game. Okay, cool. I'm in. Yeah, Let's you go. still got a thousand more games to play anyway. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, Major League Baseball off and running. How are the Reds doing, Jack? Okay, next subject. <laughs> nice <laughs> week. <over here. laughs> two and six to start the season off. I think two and eight. Just saying, I might that's, have checked this morning. He's, he's checking. You, you are correct. They've <laughs> yeah. lost six in a row. Yeah. That's what I meant. Just let's make sure we're factual here. We're factual. Yeah. Sometimes. Anyway, good to be Pirates, here. By the way, over five hundred at five and four. Don't get too excited. No, I'm not. Dude. Um, <laughs> you have to watch it as a Pirates fan. When you just got to calm it down. Wake me up in July when they're over five hundred, and then I'll then I'll pay attention. Uh, but anyway, good to be here. HD Media. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, we've been a part of video productions for a while when we're a radio show, and uh, now turn podcasts, and they're still on board with us too. So we still have video productions, and HD Media has now uh, grabbed us. So we'll be. On wvgazettemail.com, herald-dispatch.com, uh, right? Is that how I yeah. say that? Yep. Um, and also the social media accounts. So be looking out for that. Video production social media accounts. Of course, ours. And uh, basically, we're just going to film this thing and, and drop it at 4 o'clock uh, Mondays and Fridays. Yeah, we've got some we got some good guests. We're lining up here. We, we kind of wanted to come on today just as a, hey, here we are. Welcome to HD Media thing. Sure, yeah. And um, it's... Uh, I mean, I can tell you we've got Ken Tackett next Monday, which I'm looking forward to. PGA Tour rules official. Yeah, that will be great. West Virginia Golf Association executive director and sworn nemesis of one Bryson DeChambeau. So this is going to be fun. I didn't know that. Really? <laughs> Doesn't not, like Bryson no, DeChambeau. It, it, no, it's not. Last year, if, if you watched golf, it was like once every other week. DeChambeau would hit his ball in a place and then oh, be yeah, at, yeah. at Ken yeah. about some ruling he made. So it'll gotcha. be fun to joke with him a little bit about that. But Ken's a great dude, man. Um and Charleston obviously guy. lives uh, an extremely interesting life. Like, he couldn't come on the day because he was flying, like, from Mexico, I think, from a tournament. That's awesome. He's on the road every week. So, um, he's going to squeeze us in on a travel day on Monday next week. So, that's going to be cool. Of course, I I had a guest lined up, and I would, I would have to pay his agent $50. Yeah, we're not doing that. So. Yeah, just to let you guys know. Uh, that, uh, so, that happened. And then <laughs> we, are, we will never pay for guests on this show. That's not going to happen. $50 for 15 minutes. So, that I had wow. to tell him no. Um, never paid for a guest in my life, folks. It's not so gonna it's here. not going to start here. No. Um, and then, of course, I'm working on uh, Deuce McBride. Yeah, we're working on some guests. So we got a couple guys lined up. Um, but I know. thought I thought it was a good idea just to come on the day guestless I and mean, just. Sometimes it's thing. good to we're do We're changing that. the format, you know. We, we got, got Zeke over here. We got Zeke. Yeah, yeah. my son's out of school. Uh, what seems like the hundredth day of the Easter weekend at this point, but. Uh, yeah, the kids, it's uh, Easter Olympics at my Did everybody have the day off? Uh, yeah. Kanawha County was off. Yeah, I yeah, they are off Putnam Friday went. and Monday. Putnam definitely went. So, unless, either that or Malia <laughs> standing or at her school bar herself. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I haven't no, heard anything to no. the contrary. So That was a Kanawha County thing. I don't know what today is. I don't know if it has any affiliation with oh, Easter. You know, or, everyone's obviously stayed up last night watching the race at Bristol. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. All Riveting. Yeah. So what happened what, what at perfect, the Tom. at the end of the decision? Because I didn't get to catch that. Because I watched, I actually did watch the some of the race, of the decision or whatever. Whether they, uh, you said, why did it take him that long? I saw your tweet. You were talking about something, oh. or did I read something wrong? They had two rain delays and at one point. Maybe it that's like what the I was race about. was going to be over, but it came at the end of stage two, and it was like no one knew who was running where. That's what you were talking about. Yeah, so stupid. <laughs> why are you making things this difficult? Yeah. You know, like I don't, I'm not trying to explain it. Like Denny Hamlin's out of the race and he's tweeting, I have no idea who's where. I saw that. And if yeah. the driver doesn't know who's where, what are we doing? Like, really? Like, what? Yeah, I saw that. What is the point? Old Denny Hamlin going on Twitter, calling him out. I love it. I love Denny. He doesn't care. He's one of those veterans. He'll let him know. Yeah, Briscoe, man. You wrecked out. I've have no. I've had no luck in this league. I had the distinguished. I had the distinguished. Uh, I had one winner. Distinguished selection of picking someone who wrecked not once but twice. So Stenhouse doing me a double favor there. That was fun. I almost went with Stenhouse, yeah, I and then it. I went with uh, Briscoe yeah, because I was still finished way above me. So, Whew, man, 
What a race. What a great race yeah. again. But next week, good news, Talladega. We're going to get some good stuff there you next go. week. So. There you go. Any tips of Talladega picking? Anybody good usually? Yeah, your pick is, or your My tip pick's is going to be terrible. Your tip is not to take anybody good. So For just real. basically For take real. the middle of the pack, guys? No. Worse. No. Worse? Like, the, like yeah, Bubba Wallace? Like Corey LaJoy <laughs> is a constant top ten at a, at a plate track. It never fails because he's running so far behind that when the wreck happens, he has time to avoid it. Yeah. For real. I've been hanging on. I've been wanting to pick Austin Dillon, but I just never do it. He was good. That's who Kelsey had last night. He wasn't good either. So, just no luck. No luck, folks, with the uh, NASCAR league. But um, you know, since the last time we were on, to shift gears a little bit, a few things have changed in Morgantown. Yep, I'm sure we were going to talk about that today. Uh, Transfer portal is on the side of Mountaineer fans now. They love the transfer portal. Yeah, yeah it's the greatest thing that's ever happened now. So that's good. They used Basketball to hate it. Basketball team taking advantage. Basketball team got, what, four guys? Yeah, football team landed some kid at quarterback. I don't know. You may have heard of him. I don't What's know. That, uh, we, JT, we run that story. What's his last name? Did we run that story? Yeah, I think uh, I may have written something. I think he wrote something yeah. there. But, uh, yeah, so JT Daniels coming to Morgantown, two years of eligibility. Doesn't mean he's going to play the full two years. He could have a great year this year and go to the NFL. There's that. But I think that's pretty much a certainty. Um, two years. What do we think about the uh, the quarterback room right now, boys? Yeah, I wrote a piece. I want to hear what Jack thinks. The quarterback room? What do you think overall? JT Daniels, Morgantown, obviously five-star kids, played at USC, played a little bit at Georgia. See, my biggest thing is is his injuries. That's my biggest thing. I think we've talked about that. But what do you think about it And overall? He, he's your starter. Yeah, he's a starter. but He's going to be your starter. And then, yeah, I think that's a given. I, I think the thing is, you know, we post. Obviously, they're not, all four of them are not going to stay there. That's what I'm saying. Somebody's One's going to leave, and we talked about you know things are going to move in the transfer portal mm-hmm. right I after. Think, I think two spring games. Leave. You think two are leaving. One definitely. Why not two? You got another kid coming in the next class, don't you? Yeah. It, it, we posed this question, and then I wrote to call him. But said the same. I mean, is this a good thing, Jack? What do you think? Is this a good thing for W to get to get JT Daniels right now? Yes. Because it's experience at a Power Five school, and like you said, he's a he's a, he was a five star, mm-hmm. and you know, proof is in the pudding. We saw what he could do when he was not hurt. I mean, he had so, a good he had a good freshman year at USC, yeah, for sure. Um, what was he seven and zero at Georgia? Yeah, but I mean, hell, <laughs> I kind of feel like any of the three team. of us could have lined up for a good team and went six and one. <laughs> like, um, I, I, I. I I don't know. There, this thing is is the definition of a double edged sword. I think this is this is such a roll of the dice, and and, and it's kind of like I wrote in that P. It, but it I, gives you somebody with experience that the your, bright side is that backup quarterback Nico can, can sit back right. there, red shirt, and learn from an experienced quarterback. Is that what he's going to do? Though? But is that what he's going to do exactly? You think so? You think he'll stay back and do that? I, like I said, I'm not putting anything past anybody. You can't tell me there's not a P5 school somewhere that's going to roll in and be like, hey, man, you can start this year if you come here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's to keep him here, then? Well, I think WU's making moves, too. As in what? Is telling him what? That he's the starter next year? Or? I, oh, I thought about, you were talking about NIL. No, I'm talking, about talking about, I'm talking about just Nico's situation. And, look, I don't know. I haven't talked to the kid. Maybe he's all locked in. I think I think you're right. Like I think, it's a I think he was locked in before – I think they went out and got Daniels. Well, I think it's a perfect scenario for him if he allows that scenario to unfold. What happens if JT Daniels says, you know what, I am coming back next year? Yeah, that's another thing. I think it there's good and then there's bad, obviously. This and it's thing, because it's the it's this whole and this whole thing with the transfer portal and NIL is a whole nother thing, and it just adds to it as far as what they can offer to bring them, you know, over to whatever said school. But the biggest thing that you as coaches are going to have to battle every single season, is, yeah, we brought this kid in, but is he going to leave again? Is he going to go to the NFL the next year? And then I have this young recruit I brought in that's a high, highly talented recruit. Everybody's high up on him. That that makes him marketable, too, because now other universities are going, they smell blood in the water, and they're like, oh, well, this kid's not going to play. What can we offer him to bring him over to our place? So it's kind of a 
It's just a gamble. gamble. It's just a gamble gamble to me. It it is. I mean, there are definitely ways where this works out. And JT Daniels is like the next Will Greer who came in from Florida. And all of a sudden, the W offense is lighting people up. And they're winning games. And then there's another another scenario where, you know, Nico says, the hell with this, I'm out. And then JT Daniels gets injured in game two. And now where Mm -hmm. are you? Then you're with Garrett Green, most likely. Maybe, if he's even still. If they're there, Or a walk-on. Or a walk-on, yeah. And here, here's another aspect. There's a couple other aspects, too. Like, selfishly, I was looking forward to the spring game. I was looking forward to see who won this three, three-man three battle. I thought it was pretty fascinating. Like, Green, yeah. Goose, or or Nico. Like, who comes out on top of that? And I really thought it was up in the air completely. I, didn't, mm-hmm. I mean, yep. Green maybe with a slight advantage, a little bit, but yeah. not a lot. No. And... <clears throat> You know, if they roll into the season with those three guys, I think Neil Brown has a little more leeway. People are like, well, Mm -hmm. you know, he's starting a true freshman or he's starting a kid that's never played before. But now you're bringing this kid in, and now people, like the expectations just got ramped way up for this team, I feel like. Oh, yeah. I think Brown is, you know, I think he's tied his, his fate at this university to JT Daniels' arm. I really do. Yeah, because if JT Daniel, if JT Daniels goes out here and W still six and six, watch out. Yeah, and now you're now you're really in some hot water. Well, you and I already talked about this was a pivotal year for Brown. We said this is, I mean, you had your red shirt COVID year, as we like to call it. Um, as a coach, you come in your first year, we saw all the production that was gone. Um, so after that third year, and then you get the recruiting classes in, and these guys are your guys. And you're coming in, and you have these, as you like you said, you have these young quarterbacks with no experience. It really did give him a longer leash. Yeah. And now JT Daniels comes in, very familiar with uh, Graham Harrell's offense. Uh, as a kid that was a five star kid, did some things at Georgia. He's expected to come in and take this offense by the horns. And you know, you talked about Will Greer and his time. What was he? Seventy something touchdowns, twenty interceptions, over seven thousand yards passing. Is JT Daniels going to be that guy to come in and? And do that, too. Well, and, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, and it's not just that, though. Like, everyone can look at the offense, and you look at this offense, and there's no reason why it shouldn't be good. Sure. None. There's a load. There's talent everywhere. But here's what people aren't looking at. Like, JT Daniels coming in at quarterback's great. But here's the reality. You play arguably the hardest schedule of any Power 5 team in the country. Mm-hmm. Name another one that's going on the road to two Power 5 schools. Not to mention the two, but Pitt is a top 10 team according yep. to a lot of preseason stuff I've read. And if they're not, they're at least going to be ranked in the top 20. There is never an easy trip to Lane Stadium. No, I, don't care. No. I don't care what Virginia Tech looks like. Absolutely not. one of the hardest places to play this side of the, East, of the Mississippi River. There's no doubt. And <clears throat> now you have a defense that lost its best lineman. This is just reality. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. You can say whatever. That lost its best linebacker. That lost, what, five starters out of the secondary? No, basically, I mean, Charles Woods is your most experienced secondary member in terms of downs played at WU. That was just last year. So the reality of this is you're getting <laughs> you're going up against a top 15 to 20 team at, at minimum right out of the gate on the road. And... You have a defense that's almost void of experience outside of Dante Stills. And you get a couple of linemen got some playing time last year. But I don't know, man. And and now all the expectations are there, too. Yeah, I agree with you. I was going to bring that up with the defense. You know, I mean, you can have as much offense as you want. I mean, we had tons of offense when we first entered the Big, big 12 in 2012. Right. Uh, putting up gaudy numbers. But the defense can stop anybody. And that had to do with the fact that we still had Big East players playing in the Big 12. You had to recruit to the Big 12 level to get there. But, yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, this league is obviously known to put up points. And if you have a secondary that hasn't been proven – uh, Nick Troy Fortune, when he left, was a huge blow to this defense there was, as well. There's been a few of those. And uh, Samito, uh, you know, obviously uh, Asdor uh, leaving too. But, you know, th- that's Darryl the thing. Porter. Daryl Porter. I mean, there's just so many kids that left with your experience. And that was already a situation as far as depth was a, con- was a concern anyway last year with the, with the defense. So now you're talking about guys who aren't experienced – and now you're in a situation, we hope not, but you're in a situation where the offense is having to carry 
the team most games and trying to score and keep up with the opposition because your defense doesn't stop anybody. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see what and happens. Now but. the expectations are ramped. Like at right. before, I think if you're starting Garrett Green or you're starting Nico, it's kind of like, well, okay, you know, you have a quarterback out here who doesn't have experience. Okay, we can kind of understand this. There are no, there's no room for, <laughs> for that now. Now you have this guy. But, uh, you know, having said all of that, I still, I mean, it's a move that Neil Brown had to make, right? Like, you're not going to say, well, JT Daniels is out there. Yeah. He's interested. We're not going to go get him. You you're know? not going to say no to that. He was kind of in no. a corner, really. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you have yeah. to go get the kid. I don't blame him for going. I mean, that's the thing. At the end of the day, we can bitch and moan about this transfer portal all we want. But at the end of the day, these coaches are getting paid a ton of money off the productivity of 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids. And they have to win. Yeah. And and nowadays, especially with that much money coming in and the pressure and the college football playoff and all this stuff, you have to win now. And you have to earn that three, four, five million dollar a year payday. And now it's that fix. You know, mm-hmm. Brown Saul had three or four guys in this room where they have three right now, I guess. Um, unproven guys, talented, but we don't know what they have. This is a pivotal year for us. We can get JT. Most likely because of Graham Harrell. It's a nice bargaining chip. We plug him into the offense. He already knows. I don't blame him. But like you said, there's a lot of factors in there where we're going to have to sit back and see how I mean, it turns out. I think out. he had to. I, mean, yeah, I don't yeah, even that's great. Yeah. I don't blame him. Like, he yeah, had no yeah. choice. He had yeah. to go. I mean, there's no way you don't go bring this guy in. No, absolutely not. But are we done bringing people in? No. No, no, absolutely no, no, no. Not. He has so I mean, many we talked spots. about things going to move they after some, the spring games. and They have some major tons. holes still. Yeah, they have tons of scholarships There's left a, that they can. They have seven, I think. Yeah. The defensive Which backfield has to be addressed. And at last I've heard, they are high up on a ju- like the top Juco, Juco. defensive yeah. back list or whatever. Um, they need, you know, they, I think they need a wide out still for yeah. depth reasons. I think they need a linebacker Absolutely. still for depth reasons. Um, uh, you know, and there's always, I mean, another lineman here and there ain't going to hurt either. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't have too many of those. So, no, he's not done there. And, he, I mean, they have to bring guys in. That's just the reality of the situation. But I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. I will say this. Um, definitely took a little bit of the uh, bite out of Saturday spring game, though. Yeah, I was really. I agree with you with that. that. I do like trying to, uh, you know, here here's me, dumbass couch you <laughs> trying to evaluate Garrett yeah. Green. <laughs> well, his arm motion looked pretty good on that throw, Bob. <laughs> right, uh, like I know, but it was going to be fun to watch this three and see who you know we thought looked good and who yeah. didn't. Now we're going. Now it's like, going to be number two. two. No, it's number three. It's like which if two? There. Which two of these three won't be here in two weeks? Yeah. I don't know. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. But that'll still be fun, though, Saturday. Yep. Spring sure. is always cool. Sure. And another big commit on Friday to football, Bear. A linebacker, yep. right? Josiah Trotter out of Philadelphia. That li- Four star. And if, Four star. If, if that me. last name sounds familiar as well, it should. Son of former NFL Philadelphia Eagle great Jeremiah Trotter, right? Yep. Oh, I believe his nice. older brother plays at Clemson. Yeah, and he had offers from wow. Clemson and Ohio State. Wow. Yeah. This is not a yeah. – That's legit. So that, that kind of tells you what, you know – and we talked about NIL. Yeah, yeah. That's legit. And I man, saw according so. to one source, and if you're into this thing, I mean, I'm not that much. But the you 20, have sources. The twenty. No, I didn't mean. I didn't mean <laughs> that kind of source. I meant like a source on the internet. <laughs> I'm like kidding a, with you. Like you're sourcing a research paper. Yeah, no I got one you. told me this. I, I just saw you. it. Uh, the twenty three class is now ranked seventeenth in the country. Wow. He can bring him in. Sure, yeah. he, he can, can stay there. Stay. <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. So. And that's another huge part of this NIL equation with the transfer portal because that obviously as much as we want to get away from the nil conversations that's a huge huge factor in everything of as course. far as you know playing uh playing time is one thing which you know that's always been a thing especially a young quarterback coming in five-star opportunity to start right out the gate but now you got all these schools just throwing just whatever they can to stick yeah and hope that they come up there yeah and, you know, you got schools like we've talked about before, like USC, Miami's grabbing a bunch of them. Um, you know, and you talk about warm weather and beaches and clubs just and whatever else is down there. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're just grabbing whoever at this point. And uh, it's just they already have the attractiveness of the city itself. And then you throw in whatever else on top of it. And it's just a win for them all, all around. Yeah. You mean you've never been at the beach on University Avenue? 
Oh, it's a crate, yeah. I'm sure there's some fishing holes uh, over there, right? You know, I didn't do much fishing when I lived in Morgantown. <laughs> I was busy. I was doing other things. <laughs> things yeah. that weren't nearly as constructive. But you, you get back to what schools are trying to do and try to be creative mm -hmm. in this NIL era. And I'll see where WU is now offering student athletes $6,000 yeah. yep. to make yeah. good grades mm -hmm. every year. So, I saw that. Where was that when I was? Nice, right? Great, great. Yeah, I got that email. It offered me anything. I saw that email. Student and it, athletes. To be honest, I'm still kind of mad at my mom hands Malia a ten dollar bill every time she gets training. I mean, where was that when I was really? in the fourth nice. grade, fifth grade? You know, nice. My uh, my great grandmother, which is you know, or I'm sorry, my grandmother, their great grandmother, uh, she'll hand them like an envelope, like a mobster. with money in it. That's so cool. I think my mom owes me a couple hundred bucks in back pay. That's what you should tell her. <laughs> she'd be like, That's what the federal long? government will tell and you. She'll be like, how long did you live in our house? I'll be like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Too long. You're right. Touche. <laughs> For free. We didn't ask you to pay anything. <laughs> Sometimes I wish that, because when I moved back here, <clears throat> trying to get my life together, back together, which, you know, I guess it's still, I guess we're there. Yeah. Um, I wish I would have saved money when I was back with mom trying to get a place. I, I wish I would have saved that. I didn't. I just blew it i didn't have any money to save even i didn't really there. have any money either but yeah, yeah i just, make a lot of money in this work that's true yeah <laughs> but there's a reason i'll probably be landscaping <laughs> <laughs> by the way if you see me in your front yard don't worry it's just me i'm, I'm just moving some boulders and laying some mulch down not a big deal so what's our what early expectations or i'm sorry projections of what we think is going to happen with this whole thing with jt daniels I don't about a record or uh, no, just like I was say, I'm not throwing a record out. No, 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 no. I never do that, and I hate it. And I've already seen a couple articles I on Facebook. I have to do it in August, but I'm just going to see yeah, what that no, roster no. looks like by then. First. I'm saying, what do we think is going to happen as far as when Daniels is on the I mean, roster? I you think, think he's the, the automatic starter? There's... Yeah, absolutely. But what do we think with the? So we think the quarterbacks are going to move out. Is that what we think? At least one. I think at least one of Green or. I think it's probably Crowder. That's who I was first. thinking. But you hate to even say this, though, because you don't know. I mean, we haven't talked about this. This isn't us, kids, like, like, saying, you know, I don't know. For I, sure. I, I mean, it's, I put in that, in that in that column, not to keep pointing people to stuff I write or anything, but because I've kind of – the only reason is because I've kind of addressed all of this exactly. And I, I said in there, unless you went to high school at Spring Valley or Fairmont Senior, I, I don't that. trust anybody. <laughs> That's kind of the way I am with this portal thing. I just yeah. don't. I don't know. Um, I, I do think at least one of them is gone, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's two. Green strikes me as, uh, and, I, and he just strikes me as a guy just, he's just loyal yeah, to me. Yeah, but the thing about this thing, this whole movie He just is, does. I don't know why, but. I, I think this, trans, this, this is a bigger message to him than anybody else on this roster. That's true. Because I think, I think, you know, a Green having the experience, I think he probably thought, and most people did, mm -hmm. that if you were going to pick a leader in the clubhouse, it would have been him. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think this is a clear indication that he's not the answer at quarterback. Right now, at least, yeah. Well, I, I mean, but he's a sophomore. I mean, it's Tom. So, to me, he's got the most reason to leave of anybody if he wants to. Now, I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying if I'm him, I'm really starting to evaluate my situation in Morgantown. And how do you feel if Garrett Green leaves? Yeah, that's – I mean, the interesting part about him is he came in, obviously the biggest thing with him was his athleticism. Mm -hmm. um, he's a baseball guy first. Didn't really go there into go. football maybe, until much. Maybe Maisie yeah, gets Maisie him through the portal. Him. There you go. <laughs> Add him to – which, by the way, they're still – I was going to say, well. they're all right. You know? Maybe at Oklahoma State, right? They Recently? One out of three. Well, one, one out, out of three. Three. Oh, okay. That's a that's a juggernaut of a program. Well, the first game was a uh, two to one. Yeah, real so it was close. a really good game yeah, Friday. Well. And then Cowboys got them pretty good yesterday. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Thirteen three yeah. yesterday, and then W beat them on Saturday, mm -hmm. five to two. Five to two, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. The kid came in, um, and we never got to really see him throw the ball when he was in there. I mean, I guess they were just using him for obviously whatever packages with the option game, using his legs, but. I never really got to see what he could do with his arm. And maybe we'll see a little bit of that in the spring game, but yeah, with Harold's offense, but I don't know. I, I just I feel like it's a pretty clear message that And I trust these coaches. I say this all the time, and you and I have talked about this. When you got these, you know, people on social media and whatever, 
saying, oh, you know, you should start green. It was like last year, that whole thing. Oh, green should play. Green should start. And a day he's this, whatever. I trust the coaches, the ones that are around them every single day and practice around them. Those guys get paid for that for a reason. And they know those kids, and they know it's going to give them the best chance to win. So Yeah, to me, if Garrett Green's the answer, you're not in the portal anyway. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know. Right, exactly. So, And as you said, there was interest because JT myself, Daniels wouldn't have been. I think I've talked myself into Green being the guy leaving now. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> I just yeah. did that. Oh, ask, yeah. ask him again tomorrow. Yeah, well, I mean, and such is life in the portal, right? Yeah, who knows? sure. Sure. Um, I don't know. It's going to be fascinating to watch, though. And, uh, hey – Best part is Saturday's forecast. The Morgantown's like eighty and sunny. I know. Let's this do weekend's it. supposed to be really nice all around. I hope Entire today. State. I hope today is the last one. I mean, I'm so tired of going back to the forties. The forties, yeah. It's supposed to be like thirty five tonight. Yeah, I know. It's supposed it's to rain April. like the next three days too. Which sucks. I'm surprised NASCAR doesn't have a race scheduled for here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we had a text come in. Uh, former five star quarterback played at Georgia. That's enough for me. He's awesome. Thanks. So I'll hang up and listen. Who was that? That was a text I got Liz, over the weekend. Oh, when I remember, put we it don't up. know who it's from? No, I didn't put their name. It's probably Wade. Yeah, sounds like it Wade. Sounds not. like a Wade comment. No, nah, it's not because I have. Oh, maybe it is Wade. Yeah. I was thinking of Beck. Never mind. Yeah. Could be Wade. Anything FCC. Yeah, yeah, Wade. Yeah. yeah. George, that sounds like Wade. So there you go. As if Wade's never been a bad football player to ever play at Georgia. I mean, hey, Tebow is the uh, savior of all college football. <laughs> now you've just alienated Wade. He's done with our show. That was it. That's all he needed to hear. You can't take a shot at Tebow to Chris Wade. Trust me. I don't think we spoke for four years when he was in college. Did you really? know he uh, he did some bad things to a team I happened to root for around that time, too. Yeah, that's true. That was bad. <clears throat> but... Yeah, man. Spring game this Saturday. Try to get Jack to go. He yeah, he's trying to get seeds. a ride. Oh, he's trying to get a ride. Okay. Jack, uh, Jack, Jack, I've turned Jack into a resident prep softball junkie at this point. <laughs> Came Somebody, out the hurricane yeah. and watched a good game. With, actually, it wasn't a good game. Yeah, it was a blowout. On paper, it was a good game. He's seen. He's been hurricane twice. Maybe it's your, I don't know if it's your fault or my fault. The hurricane Two gets whipped every time we every show time up. there. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, they. Uh, Donnie likes to see me down there, but I don't think the softball people <laughs> yeah, like to see me. I don't think Megan Stevens likes to see me either at this point. Yeah, um, no, nah, they'll get it. Uh, they'll get it straightened out though. They they ended up beating, they they beat Sissonville like five to one Friday, um, which was a nice win for them. So they'll be okay. They have a they have a pretty good culture down in that area. We got a lot of response from. I was posting that clip about Shane Lyons talking about the softball program. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, a lot oh, of us I knew, I knew we would. Yeah. yeah. yeah a lot there of was response some... and not a lot of positive No, response. it wasn't. I mean. No. They're not buying it. They're no, not buying it. And, hey. I mean, it kind of is. I, I, kinda, I mean, I'm kind of with them. Because <laughs> I went back and listened like, to it. Uh, so I was listening to their comments and them sharing, you know, whoever's sharing it on Twitter or Facebook, whatever. And I was like, okay. And I noticed, obviously, there were softball players, coach, whatever, or tied to softball. And I was like, Megan and Katie Mathis. Yeah. Mathis texted me personally. I, I'm not going to share what she said, obviously. But let's just say a lot of people in the community are not real, not, not, real, not, not real enamored yeah. with that response. And, uh, and, I, and I agree. And I agree with them, though. Well, yeah. yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah. 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 Well, I went back and listened to it and kind of just digested it a little bit more instead of just going, okay, these are just softball players that are angry because they don't have it. And they're right, though, the way he worded it. It's like, money-wise, you can... There's no reason why you couldn't monetize and make money off that. I mean, softball is... I compete at a high level, too. I think that also probably pissed a few people off, but... It's just kind of... I think you could you could do... You could do something with that. I'm sorry, but you can't. And maybe he was saying, hey, we've looked at it. It just doesn't seem feasible right now. But they may yeah. be continuing to look at that. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's something they get to. The you never know. And then you, you never have know. The whole, you have the whole title nod thing. And that comes yeah, true. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. maybe it has something to do with that. Like, the last thing I'm doing is calling out, you know, Shane or anything like that. No, 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 no. I was I'm just, just saying, saying, going back and listening to that, I can see where they... I think it's just yeah. their conclusions. It's yeah. just frustrating for everyone who follows that sport, like I have for the last five to ten years, and like you know Megan, who's coached in this sport forever, and Katie, mm-hmm. who played here in this state, and now coaches in the state. To think about what a lineup would look like if you just took in-state kids, like yeah, it, it would yeah, be yeah. <laughs> like like yeah. it would be competitive with just about anybody. I mean, when you're talking about kids, yeah. as you've seen and you've been around. 
when you got kids getting D1 offers in general, and they're going to schools like Florida State and schools like that for softball, I mean, so, yeah, you can so get. So it's the, just like like Jack, the kid that we saw that pitched for Lincoln County when they beat Hurricane up here. Mm-hmm. She's on the Futures Team Watch, which is a list of like fifty kids in the country. Mm-hmm. She might play in the Futures game. That's crazy. I mean, that's and that's just. Yeah. Just, One kid that we saw that's really mm-hmm. good, and there's those kind of kids everywhere here. Yep. It's just like we have – I was counting the other day. It was something like seven or eight Division One players in the Kanawha Valley alone. That's what I'm saying. Like, like you take those up to Morgantown. And that's not yeah. counting the Huntington area. That's not counting yeah. Lincoln County. That's not counting – you always get three, four, five, six yeah. from up north too because that – you know, for so long, the southern half of the state's been better than the northern half of the state, but the northern half's coming. Like, every year, that gap closes a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So, they're they're cranking out some kids. I mean, Marshall had an outfielder that played at university. Mm-hmm. Not sure if she's still there or not, but they produce some, too. So, yeah. that that's the that's, – I think that's the thing that has everyone frustrated is that the one sport that West Virginia actually produces a good number of kids in, mm-hmm. your flagship university doesn't have an athletic program to harbor them. And that's yeah, kind of tough. Yep. Yeah, the competition comment, and obviously some was weather, which we've seen baseball. We've talked to Maisie about that, struggling with being in a, a state, especially up north, northern part of the state, where they get snow and you know, May. <laughs> but just trying to. So do we. <laughs> yeah, we do now. But, uh, but trying to combat the, you know, the weather and you're inside trying to practice. And it just isn't the same when you're taking on, you know, these schools that like Texas that can be outdoors and they can just, they can, they can go all year long. Yeah. And West Virginia, you know, you can, but these kids got to go down to Florida and other places to train and, and, and just I a think, headache. I think it would be big for the sport here too. I think it would only, I think one side would further the other because I think there's a lot of people here. You know, I grew up a baseball guy. I think there's a lot of baseball people that won't give softball a chance because mm-hmm. they're like, why do I don't want to watch this? I'm telling you, as someone who played baseball, who loved baseball, if I have the choice, I'm going to a softball game every – I watched a game in Buffalo on Friday that I mentioned earlier. The game time was an hour and 15 minutes. In, out, saw two great pitching performances, some good right. players, and you're done. Like, it, there, And there's no – all right, we have to meet at the mound for 15 minutes every inning. Okay, every at bat's going to take eight minutes. No, it's one, two, three, zip. You're out of here. One, two, th- like it's action all the time. All the time. It's hits yeah. and runs. There's bunt and runs. There's strategy involved with it. And I think if you got, because you all know, when West Virginia's good at anything, all of a sudden people pay attention. Yeah. I mean, you even saw it with Marshall at some. Like there were people watching men's soccer that had never watched soccer in their lives. Call it uh, a couple years Marshall back. Marshall was good. A couple you know? years back, that's what got me mostly. I mean, I followed the college baseball a little bit with a view, but that's really what got me in was the Alec Manoa year. Well, look at the yeah. look at the crowd they I had. Mean, that was this, great. That was awesome. They had a great crowd up there this weekend, yeah. and that's just because people followed a view. It doesn't matter yeah. what they're good in. If they're mm-hmm. good, they're going to come. Yep. And if they had a softball program that not only was good but featured. Local. Half or yeah. more local yeah. talent. Yeah, absolutely. Then you've got dudes who have never watched softball in their lives that watch this, and all mm-hmm. of a sudden, oh, wait, I have a daughter who's six. I want to get her in this. Yep, absolutely. And it just furthers the, the, the sport in the, in the state, too. We, we've talked about it. Just look at the state tournament. Yeah. 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 Come come and watch a state tournament and just look at the, the massive the crowd. crowds yeah, that are yeah. there. Yep. I'm going to tell you, I went to Hoover on – um, my days mixed together. I think it was Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday last week, and they played Nitro, and obviously that's a big game. I got there a half hour early, and uh, I take a lawn chair because I like sitting outside during softball, as you know. But I take a lawn chair, and I walk out behind the fence, and Hoover's entire back fence is lined. There's not – I found one spot right under the scoreboard in between three people. People were pulling their trucks up to the fence and just popping the tailgate and putting, like, blankets and chairs up and i mean the whole fence line and nitro travels well too i mean yeah. th- this is a regular season game and it's you can't it's standing room only in there and i found That's that awesome. i mean that hurricane crowd we had what was like little league day or something when they were playing yeah. st hall but that was packed in there i mean, I mean you were sandwiched in between five people yeah people were mad we were taking the spot <laughs> yeah yeah and it's uh you don't even have room to spit seeds anywhere i was half afraid it's gonna hit jack of one <laughs> so i was just kind of like <laughs> right between my legs here, just trying to hit this little spot, and um, spitting yeah. on that lady's shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, "I'm squeezing in." I was like, "I guess you are." <laughs> no, I mean the crowds at those games are great, and it, like I said, if W has a program, all yeah, of a sudden yeah. that yeah, 
the interest even just goes, explodes yeah. everything. So I oh. think that's what's frustrating most to people who have followed the sport for so long. We have such a in this state such passion behind and rooting for each other i think that's the thing people local you know that's why we talk so much about local sports legends and heroes or whatever when we were kids i mean we talk about gr house at nitro when we were kids and oh yeah you know you, you talk about and they go to western university all of a sudden now you got a like you said a major rooting interest there mm-hmm. not only if they're good but you, you know they're from nitro they're from you know hayes valley they're from you know wherever and you're like oh that's that's kind of cool you have a whole roster of West Virginia kids, and it just adds to it. Well, I was, yeah, I saw a bunch of stuff just the other day about was it Noah Short yep. playing again for for WU, and people yep. were like, "Oh, Winfield yeah, Zone," yeah, yeah, and yep. people do that. Like yeah, even absolutely. the loudest ovation every time WU basketball rolled on the floor last year was when Jalen Bridges came out. Sure, is it from Fairmont? Or, uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. Thing. Yeah, so, I mean, I you mean, could have a whole team of that if you had it's a just, softball. It's team. that it's that mentality that we all have. Being from West Virginia, and it's always looked at as, oh, it's just West Virginia. It's always an underdog. It's never respected. They got jokes and whatever it is. And that's it's that mentality like we work hard, we fight, we get our positions, we root for other people to do well. Um, it's just that. That's what you love about this state. And like you said, if you bring that in to a softball program, I mean, that thing's going to just ignite. It I, is. I think someday it will happen. I don't know if it will yeah. be in the next three years. I don't know if it will be in the next ten but, and you could bring in some really good games cool. I mean, up there too. I mean, especially could, if you're staying in the Big Twelve, absolutely where is where Texas is, where you have some powerhouse yes. programs. It's going to happen. Well, can you imagine Marshall and W and softball? Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I understand everyone's ire. I got emails about it actually. Like, hey, I listened to that their podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that new Fago podcast. It, <laughs> that broadcast. I think that's what the they podcast, say. Yeah, dude. the broadcast. That's what we are over here. Right in love with Ryan Pritch. No broadcast. Um, but no, I, I understand it. It's it's definitely uh it's it's something to think about. But I, I tell you, I, I really there's rarely Anything in prep sports, I like watching more. It's because of the level of play I get to see on a night in, night out basis. I remember just going more into that passion of West Virginia. Um, I remember, you know, I was in Columbus and I was working for this painting company while I was in broadcasting school, and the owner or the or the head guy or whatever of the team, the crew, uh, was like, "Yeah, you just don't understand, you know, high state fans. We we were born this, and you know, it's generation after generation." I was like, "Buddy, I'm from West Virginia." <laughs> Now, I don't think you understand how crazy and how much we follow WVU or, you know, Marshall fans or whatever, because there's just, there's only so many opportunities here. There's only so many teams. There's only, and your family always like rooted for one or the other, or maybe both, yeah. but you grew up around it. And it was just like, it was life. Like for my dad, that was like a way of life. Mm-hmm. You get up and before they were on national TV every single week. You would listen to the games on the radio or, or, or whatever, unless they were going to get their ass kicked, and then they were on national TV against Miami or Syracuse or whatever. Good that year, yeah. Um, that was the worst one. But the I always oh game yeah yeah. Four was just uh, Todd Sovereign. So- yeah, the, the player of the game was Todd Sovereign. The Sovereign, yeah, yeah. An eighty yard punt. Yeah, I think he had, more, he had more. He had more yards yeah. on that punt than W had total yards in the game. It was like a ninety four yard punt or something like, like something crazy. That I, don't well, I can remember long. as a kid, my dad woke me up at like midnight one night because W football was playing my or playing Hawaii. Out oh, at yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Football? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. What year yeah. was that? That was like early 80s. I think. Yeah. No. Yeah, I still always keep staring at that picture every time you break it up. I love that picture <laughs> so much. Um, but no, it, it was just funny. It was like the poster for the, the new horror movie. That's <laughs> Some dude with a sledgehammer just terrorizes small town. My my one moment in, in the Charleston Daily time. Mail, the old Charleston Daily Mail. That was my one moment. So. Oh, that's great. Though. Back in 1988. Hammer Time starring Jack Withrow <laughs> as the killer. Tom Aloise. So. i tell you what, though, you have more pictures of the paper than I ever had growing up, so that's nice. Boom, there you Absolutely. go. I had that one as a yeah, kid. You did, too. Acting, saying I want to be a Novi football player. Again, goes back to the whole... Uh, growing up around it, but yeah, that's why I was never. And I think that's kind of everything, though, because you you guys love baseball, but I never grew up around a baseball family. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. I, I guess it's kind of with a lot of stuff. But my point was the passion behind WVU or Marshall or whoever. It's kind of a it's kind of what you grew up with. Yeah. So 
Yeah, for sure. Of course, some of those memories are awful because you're, you know, your dad. We need to get some, and we need to figure out like <laughs> we need to figure out something every week to get some fan interaction. Sure, fan yeah. listener interaction. Like someone would be a fan of me and you, but yeah, yeah, they're like <laughs> a listener interaction. Are these like, guys? And that might be a good one this week. Like, what's the worst loss you, you can remember as a WU fan? Not like we can do one like, for Friday. Can we, can we take away the uh, no, pit no, game? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that'll so that'll no, get all of them. That's yeah. the caveat. It has to. Be, I mean, like the worst, like drubbing. Like they just got absolutely housed. Because that Nebraska game to me, I don't remember W ever getting beat worse in a game. I know they lost to Temple one year at home in the driving rain. 17 14, Rich Rodriguez. They lost to Ohio State really bad, too, though. No, that game was like 38 21. It wasn't really? as bad. I thought they lost thought. bad. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. I mean, they got, right. they, I mean, it was never like W was going to win the win game. It, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I'm, that was seven. Like, Nebraska shut W out. It was terrible. Game. So here's my challenge. That was 94, here. right? Yeah. Yeah. It was the year after, the, year after the, game, the first yeah. game. And Nebraska had Tommy Frazier. Tommy Frazier. So here's my here's my thing to the listeners this week. I want you to comment, text, whatever. Yeah. A loss that you remember that was more lopsided than the Nebraska ninety four game. There were a couple Oklahoma ones in there. Man, like Neil Oklahoma. Brown's first year nineteen when they went down there and got wrecked like fifty two to fourteen or Baker whatever. Baker's last year in Morgantown yeah. fifty six to twenty eight, but it wasn't even. It yeah, wasn't they close. scored a few. Yeah, late that was they, rough. Yeah, but. So yeah, what what's your most lob? I don't want to hear thirteen and nine. We don't we don't no, need no, to no, ever no. bring that up on this show. That never needs to be said again. Yeah, we know we know that we know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think that would be interesting because it's funny how this, a couple of those lopsided losses stick out. Because I can remember like the second W game I was ever at. My dad took me when I was like twelve or thirteen, and we went to, to Morgantown. Of course, it snowed six inches. And Syracuse rolled in with McNabb, yeah, that and was they rough. absolutely just—I think it was that like had to be a rough. thirty-nine, yeah. eight to seven or something. Just it was such a miserable experience. And you know, in retrospect, I should have known then. You know, being a W fan, it was going to be rough. <laughs> just a single tear, seven just a single tear going yeah, down your cheek in the snow for three hours. This is fun, Dad. Freezes to your cheek <laughs> as the tear comes down. <laughs> <laughs> that one frozen cheek. Yeah, that was rough. So. 2001 was rough. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I was also sitting. We had uh, second row seats right behind the W bench. Was that the 50-yard like line? Three and eight. Yeah. 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 And um, the they, beat, year. they beat Rutgers 80-7. 80 80 to to seven. Seven. I remember, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How bad but anyway, was Rutgers? But any, <laughs> anyway, Virginia Tech just throttled them 35 to nothing that game. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, we got great seats. And then I got to sit there and watch that. The murder. Uh, and then they got beat by Notre Dame the very next week. 41 to 7 or yeah. something. Then the week after that, they got drubbed by Miami. Yeah, I remember that. It's like, oh. so that was the last year that W's football and basketball team had a losing record in the same year before this year. 2001. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2001. It's a bad year. Bad year. Yeah. We're hoping it bounces back this year. Yeah. Got those transfers. Speaking of that, the transfers coming out of the basketball But I, I don't even think this year was as bad as that year because at least no. W went to a They're bowl game this year. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like they were three and eight. They were also they, very competitive That was like those games. Yeah, you know, Jack, that was – speaking of lopsided losses, that 0-1 stretch, like 0-1 to 0-5, wasn't that when Maryland just kicked W's mm-hmm. teeth in every time? They, they did it twice in one year, yeah. I think. Like 38-6 and 41-7 or something. Oh, like, that reminds like me. Here's, a, here's another bad loss. 2013, Holgerson, Maryland, and Baltimore shut Ooh, out. Yeah. That was a brutal game to watch. Yeah, because that was the year that Marshall played Maryland in a bowl game and, and beat, beat them. <laughs> that, I'm, you know, there are W fans that literally are like, there's never a time that Marshall could have beat W. I'm like, watch that season. That's yeah, one yeah, of those years yeah, where I, I honestly believe had they played. I agree with you. That was the Rakeem yep. Cato yep. year. I think Marshall would have beat W that year. I really do. I agree with you. That uh, that was bad. I just remember Holgerson standing like this with the rain just dropping from his hat. He just looked like he wanted to fight the first person that said something yeah. to him. It was the 03 season. We got beat by Maryland twice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was once in the Gator Bowl, right? Yeah, because they did. They were like really good after they lost. It was it's like that was Scotty McBrian, maybe yeah, forty-one to seven. Forty-one seven. Yeah, in the Gator. What was the, one of them? What was the twenty thirteen loss? That was thirty-eight to nothing, right? Is that what they beat? Forty-four. What? Forty-four. Okay, they scored a touchdown. I can't remember. It was so bad. It hey, was, I went really. to the uh, Sugar Bowl. Oh, the Florida Sugar Bowl. Oh, the Florida oh Sugar God. Bowl. There's a good candidate. And I about um, that bomb we're for touchdown in there. after that's over. Yeah, we got the touchdown, the big yep. long touchdown. I'm yep. like, oh yes, you know, yep. we're all pumped up, and then it was lights out. 
What was the linebacker's name from Florida? Grow. Yeah. That, that dude stud just real stud, stud steel. Stud still shouldn't have been in there. He was concussed. Helmet. I mean, helmet on. The chin strap was going straight down his nose. Yeah. yeah. And he, he lines up underneath the guard. Like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. <laughs> he had no idea where he was. Uh, no, he was, should not have been in there. And the, and the bad thing is, they had four big screens inside the Superdome, and they were zoomed in on him while he's trying to line up. Mm-hmm. Not under, under, under the, the center. center. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <sighs> Iowa State. Iowa State two years ago. Yeah, that was bad. Iowa State's been on the on the right side of a couple of those too. So I don't know. That'd be interesting. I'm going to hear from. Hopefully, get some some people out there have some yeah, memories I've, from like the 80s and 70s, or you know, I made ones a that we're not thinking of. I made a really quick graphic this morning, as you guys saw, so we can use that just to, as a text and talking. Yeah, we need to better. do that every show because I think I can speak for all of us. I think the part of this. I like this format. I think this is going to be really good for everybody. But the one part I do miss is the live interaction we got. Yeah. You know, no, we can do Brandon that. Brandon Lewis and Wade and Beck and all those guys. So hopefully they, they do that and we can walk into a show with some stuff, you know, they've, they've provided us. So I told, I've, I've told them that that's what we're going to do. So, um, and I'm going to blast it out as we get topics to going into it. So Friday we should put something else on social media. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to put it on Gazette's facebook too so we can do that too yeah and blast it out to them so 2013 we got beat by kansas too at kansas. Mm-hmm. that was a bad year yeah. that was four and eight year and that was kind of lopsided wasn't it yeah like 42 30 31 19 yeah yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> horror that was <laughs> horror horror in years i mean that was absolutely and that was when they were rotating three different quarterbacks oh, gosh. and then they finally landed on trickett at the end of the season then he went as the start of the next I'm st- year i'm still of the old school man and that always worried me last year like if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's kind of the way out there. And has a quarterback rotation ever really worked? I, I mean, it, for me, it's fine if you do red zone stuff. And, you know, you have packages where a guy comes in. Yeah, and he I can guess get like you the, a, the Chris Leak Tebow for, sure. uh, from 08 thing that everyone gives Tebow credit for that title, even though it was Chris Leak's. But anyway. But the only thing. No, <laughs> just stick that in there. The only thing. The, the, the biggest thing with that is the rhythm. And as a coach trying to find when you pull that guy out to pull in the package that you're going to run with the second quarterback. Because we yeah. saw that with West Virginia a couple of times this I past think, year. I really think it hurt him more than it helped. Or Deggie had, I mean, he was just lasering, and he was on a drive, and then they would throw a green in, and then the drive would just stall, and they'd have to kick a field goal. Yeah. I mean, it could have been a touchdown. So, and that could have been a difference in a lot of games. So, yeah, I think I think last year was all about just searching for some answer that never came. Yeah. And now JT Daniels might be that answer. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Find out. I mean, you got experienced O line. You got a bunch of wideouts you've had. Um, I, I agree with you. You still need a little depth there, but uh, offensively they look set up. Yeah. Yep. Excuse me. I think uh, as I was vomit, button. edit button, edit. But that's the good thing. Jack can edit your burps out now. Yeah, that's the thing. No, no, no. He's just gonna no, keep, you're it getting, in. You're keep it getting in. Keep it in. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> it's what it is. He did it one time. My mom texts me and just says, "Really." <laughs> And I was like, what? Because I, I missed it. I'm so used to it. Like, what, what, me burp, burp yeah, just, Was that you or Brands? like, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love that your uh, your mom's tuned in, man, watching. She's a, she's she a fan. That's awesome. Yeah. Number one fan my whole life. What are you going to say? That's so what do we got uh, coming up this week, everybody? What do you guys got coming up? Got a softball game tonight if they play. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Get my Long John's back. South Charleston at St. Albans. I've seen that they've taken all the rain out of the forecast the rest of the afternoon. This is going to be cold. It's just going to be cold. Be it's already wet. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not getting over 48. So here we go. Jack's coming. It's going to be You're nice. going to go to South Charleston, St. Albans. By the way, you're, you're going to have to come to my house just to say hey to my stepdaughter. She brings you up all the time. She's like, is Jack going to be there? <laughs> He's really nice. Make a pit I stop, him. say hey, sign an autograph. He's funny. I'm, like, yeah, he I'm Zeke's favorite. best friend now because yeah. I got him the password. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Yeah. He would have just he's in his zone right now, stared angrily. So before we let go, I'm going to share that story that I didn't share in the first hour. Let's do it. It was a tough Sunday yesterday at the okay. house. Um, has anybody ever had to dig a six foot trench from behind their house to pull their dead cat from out from under their house? No. No, I have not. That was pretty rough. Yeah. That was my what, Sunday. One of the cats di- died. So, to tell the whole miserable story, and of course, it's the one that, you know me. I, I, we, for Is this all the, the same cat you always talk yeah, about? Yeah. Yeah, for all the hell that we give PETA, you know, and I'm pretty, I like to think of myself <laughs> as a pretty, 
emotionally rock solid guy. Like this one got to me a little really? bit. Yeah, I had a human moment yesterday with an animal, which I thought would never happen in my entire it's life. It's changing, but, folks. Um, no, so a couple of weeks ago, Kelsey went to the beach, <clears throat> and uh, I let the cats out. We always do, you know, and they come back. <laughs> well, one of them didn't come back. And it's not that out of the ordinary. She's been gone for up to a week before. Sure, cats um, do that. And here's a lesson for all you fine folks at home that I had to find out the hard way. If you fix your female cat, they will still fornicate. Mm-hmm. So she would, like, disappear with Tom cats for, like, a week. And, and she'd yeah. come back and always, like, shame yeah. her about it. You know? like, you How little, dare you? You little trollop. Get in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and no, so she, she didn't come back. And it was like, okay, whatever. Well, like the next day, I'm walking through my house, and I get over my kitchen, and I hear this growl from under my feet. Now, you want to talk about it's dead night, it's dark, and I'm walking through my house to go, like, take a pee or something, and just right under my feet, it's like, like, it's like, God, I could jump three feet in the air. Like, it was right here. And I'm like, what the hell? So, I have a crawl space in the front of my house. It was sealed up. And a couple of years ago, one of the cats had dug a hole from the backside, and okay. I covered it up with a piece of firewood. And I'm like, I got both of those. What's going on? So, like, the next day I come out, and I'm walking the perimeter of my house. And sure enough, right behind my air conditioning unit, in between all the wires, there's a slit dug about that high mm. and about that wide. And I look under it, and you can see gray hair hanging from it. Like, whatever had just cleared out enough to get under it. <clears throat> and I'm like, what the hell? And sure enough, like, later that day, I walked through the house, and again, like, right under my feet, like, growl. And I'm like, what is that? Yeah. So (laughs) I take the cover off of the crawl space. I get a flashlight out. It's pitch dark. It's raining, and it's cold, of course. And I get under there, and under my house, my house is really old. It looks like a mountain range, Yeah. like, under there. And there's duct work laying everywhere, and it's amazing. There's nails hanging off the top. I actually have a huge, like, slit in my back right now from where I caught on one of them. But I go digging in there. <clears throat> I even get Malia with me because she's tiny. I can get her in. Yeah. Don't worry at home. She was safe. You know, I wasn't going <laughs> to let her get hurt or anything. Put that but, underneath the video. Yeah. <laughs> Brian puts kids' life in danger. <laughs> but we get in there, and we can only get up so far until we run into, like, my air conditioning duct. And you can't mess with that. Like, it, it will kill everything. Yeah. And I'm shining the flashlight around. I'm looking. We're calling. If we don't hear anything. So I'm like, all right, well, here's what I'll do. I'll leave the crawl space opening off, and I'll open the thing in the back. So yeah. if they're stuck in the back, they'll yeah. see daylight in the day. And Maybe. Go, oh, oh, yeah. So we wait another day. Gets to nighttime. What are you thinking it is at this point? Well, like I, a rat. Like a well, I knew raccoon. It was a possum, possum. No, no, no. Possum. It was a cat. I knew it was a cat. Okay. But the thing about my neighborhood is we have like 12 feral cats that live in our neighborhood. So you're thinking it's one of them? Yeah, okay. and um, like I said, like she would run off with a tom for a week sometimes, and then she would just show up. So then the next day, sure enough, walking through the house, hear it again. So me and Malia go back outside, and I shine the light up in the hole, and all the way in the back behind one of the duck works, I can see a black cat back there in the back. I can see his eyes shining. Yeah, I can tell he's, he's his a eyes. big black tom, and I'm like, oh, God. I can't get back there to it because about halfway it closes down to about like that. Yeah. There's no way I'm getting through there and I'm not sending Malia through there because anyway, what do you do when you get to a feral cat? It's going to kill you, right? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll just leave this crawl space open, blah, 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 and then it'll come out. So a day, another day goes to get up to about five, six days and then Kelsey comes home and then all hell breaks loose because, uh, you know, I got to tell her, uh, your There's cat's cabin, missing. Yeah. Well, your cat's missing. Yeah. And we have a cat stuck under our floor. <clears throat> so, you know, another day goes by, another day goes by, and then I hear it again. And, and Kel, I'm like, Kelsey, did you hear that? And she's like, what was that? I was like walking toward the bathroom. She walks in there and you hear it oh, like that. She's like, what is that? I'm like, it's a cat. I don't know whose it is. Yeah. I think it's this black cat that me and Malia saw. Well, shun the light under there. There's no black cat. And like I said, we, Kelsey went all the way up in there as far as she could go and, like, whistled which, you know, our cat would usually come to, nothing. And then, like, about five, six, well, it was probably a week, week and a half ago, Kelsey told me she was walking through the house and heard a cat meow. She's like, that was that was our cat. I know it was, like, under the floor. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can't do anything. It's like, I can't get back there because she's got to be somewhere in the back. This is terrible. I know. And then I can't dig right where the air conditioner is because I'm going to hit a wire air or wire, something yeah. to electrocute myself or kill our air conditioner. Yeah. And either one of those are bad options. <laughs> 
So she's like, I just know she died. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, I could tell that was like her last gasp, but she's been stuck down there. And I'm like, whatever, you know. I'm thinking that it's probably this black cat that's leaving because yeah, the cover's yeah. off. And then it's coming back. So I put the covers back on because uh, I was shining down there. I didn't see anything. And that was it until like for like a week. And then yesterday morning, we're getting ready for church service because it's Easter Sunday. And Kelsey goes in the bathroom and like opens the vanity door at the bottom and just got hit with like dead animal a smell. smell. I'm like, oh, oh man. So I'm like, well, what do we do? <laughs> so I'm like explaining this story to my dad. And he's like, well, I think I might have something. He's like, come out here. My dad, who has every, like, whatever the job is, he automatically has yeah. the tool. He has these, like, four interconnecting poles with a hook on the end. And this thing will go 30 feet. Wow. And I'm like, where do you even get this from? Yeah. He's like, I don't know. We'll go down there and check it out. I was like, all right. <clears throat> so you can't dig where the new trail is. So I pulled the log I had blocking the old one off. And as soon as you stuck your face down there, it was you like. smell it, yeah. I was like, God. So I get a shovel out, and I start digging. And you have to dig back as long as that pole is because when you're pulling it out. So I'm digging like an 8, 9, 10-foot ditch for out from my house toward the middle of my backyard. And I get down there with a flashlight, and I'm looking, and you can like see a cinder block. I'm like, man, I don't see anything. Dad's like, let me see. And he gets down there, and he's like, oh, yeah, I see it. I'm like, what? He's like right there. And he points, and I'm like, I don't see nothing. <laughs> my dad's like got the sh- he's got like eagle oh, eye, dude. And hear like when he needs to hear something, he's like, "Did anyone else hear that cotton ball brush that piece of felt three hundred yards away?" I'm like, "No, I didn't." But he's like, "You don't see that?" And I'm like, "No." He's like, "Look right to the right of that block." And I'm like, "I don't know." He's like, "Watch this," and he feeds that that pole all the way back in, and he starts pulling it out. He's like, "I got something," and he pulls it like halfway, and he's like, "Oh damn, that just got off." He's like, "Look now," and I stuck my head under that hole, and dude. There she was. Uh, Oh, so he's like, all right, hold on. And he puts it back in and he drags her out. And I mean, it's, it was bad. Like half of her face is missing. Like, it's just, it was brutal. So I have to like, Kelsey's on the porch. I'm like, half her face missing. She just kind of went, I have a theory. I don't know what happened. Because, like I said, we left openings. Like there was no way. Yeah. She shouldn't have been able to get out. Right. So I think. She panic or something? The theory that I have is that the black cat that me and Malia saw fought her down there and uh, injured her to the point where she couldn't get out. Gotcha. And then she died the horrific death of either bleeding out over the course of five days or dehydrating or whatever happened. So That's I had brutal. to take a, fl- a flat shovel, and I picked her up. And Kelsey's on the porch. I'm like, Kelsey, don't look over here. Oh <laughs> it's God. like, don't. So then here's the here's the, here's the Ryan Pret luck, right? There's nothing funny about this story, but there is. I throw her in the river. I just gave her a burial at river because I'm not digging a hole for a stinking, rotting, decaying animal. Well, just the way, remember how I told you like last year that they dumped a bunch of rock into mine and my yeah. neighbor's <laughs> riverbank? Yeah. Well, over the course of a year and a half, like trees that have washed down shore have gotten stuck in these rocks. So I throw her out in the river, and of course the wind just turns around. <laughs> And blows her straight into a tree in my neighbor's dock, <laughs> and she's still there. Her half <laughs> decayed, rotted body. I don't need to laugh about that. But no, that's, I know. It's, it's, the, I'm picturing no, it's, this. That's the, it's yeah. the correct response. Yeah, yeah. So Malia comes home, like, Malia, don't look in the river. Why? And then I have to explain this whole oh story. And of course, the first thing she wants to do is go, well, I'm like, you're not looking. So I keep her in the house. But now, yeah, I came out this morning and looked, and she's stuck. And, uh, yeah, that's like the only animal like, I've ever had that like like liked a cat me. flag. Yes, yeah. it's a dead cat that like flown. liked me and I liked it. Oh man, and sorry it, about that. Like man. yesterday, like I'm sitting there, like you know, at night, like sitting there in bed, like man, I'm really gonna miss that animal. Like it kind of sucks. <laughs> like you yeah. know, and I, just, I never thought like you know me and how I am with animals. I hate animals, but. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of a rough little Easter Sunday. Damn, that's rough. Right. That is that. rough. Pulling it out. I can imagine now, pulling that well, cat out. Because now you sit there and you think. Think about how it died. I think that's the thing. That well, yeah. And, and you think, well, why didn't I just dig it out before? Yeah, what ifs. But I didn't know it was stuck down there. In my mind, it was that black cat coming in and out and being pissed off and yeah. doing whatever it was doing. Yeah. 
Um, nah, that's not. Nah, that's not your fault. And that's what, like, Kelsey's like, do you think we failed? I think, like, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, dude, kind of understand what you're saying. Like, Kind of, but not really, because yeah. it's not like you knew she was down there, and you're just like, ah, die, cat. You know what I mean? But, you know, that cat killed a lot of mice. I mean, it was, like I said, like, every day. Like, you're going to have to get a new one now. I know we've already discussed this, but I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready just to replace her yet. I don't know if I'll find one like that. Especially when you go to the, down to your river, you can see her there every yeah, time. She's got to float away first. Get out of here. I'm hoping an eagle just comes down at some point. Like, please. Take it away. It's just so unnecessary at this point. You know? It's oh. like, okay. And she's literally stuck in between these two branches. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I just, just picture everything she's been through, an eagle. And then, and, then I think, oh, and then I think, well, we're going to get a bunch of rain today at a while. And then, of course, it, there's no rain now, so it's just going to stay there for, I don't know. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but no, it, it was weird. You know, for my job, I work at home. You know, I write stories from the house, and mm-hmm. Leah's at school, and Kelsey's at work. And it was always, every time my computer would open, she'd hear it and run in and run just in. Like lay, like, right yeah, beside yeah. me. And I'd be like, okay. And that was, like, every day for yeah. two it's years. It's like her buddy. It's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. 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 I never thought I'd be sad over an animal. So there you go. Did you cry? PETA, you win. Did you cry whenever? I you haven't yet. I'm a suppressor. So you'll so you're someday gonna, I'm gonna explode. So you're gonna do one that is like crazy. What's wrong? And I'm like I miss my cat. That's crazy. <laughs> Ugly cries in your car at a softball game. You're just gonna come in. Like, ah! uh, no. What's wrong with that guy? No. I, no, I don't blame you, dude. I mean, that's rough to do it that way. That was you know. That's rough. So. Now Malia wants to murder every black cat on our street. And I'm like, well, honey, I don't have that much ammunition. There's a lot of them. Saving these for the duck. Yeah. And it's actually good. And well, and, the geese. and that's another yeah. thing. They had spotted coyotes right down the street from us. So I thought, yeah. damn, she got snagged by one of them. You know, that there's make more so sense. many things that can happen to a cat, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes yeah. cats, they have feline leukemia, which apparently like. One of my cats got of, one. Yeah, like half yep. of cats in the world have it now. Yep. So I thought maybe, and she had always been more affected by the other one. She was older. She was like six. And I thought, well, you know, sometimes cats know they're going. And they'll just go somewhere and die. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, maybe that's what she did. Never thought she was, like, wounded right under my feet Mm. for six, seven, eight days, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean. So happy Easter. (laughs) (laughs) It was a magical day at my house. Yeah. Now you see why I didn't want to lead yeah. off our first podcast ever with HD Media like that. People yeah, are going to yeah, be like, what the hell am I listening to? <laughs> Get you the at the end of it. the most depressing thing I've ever heard. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, that's tragic for sure. But I mean, animal, Animals are our family. I've got two dogs. I've had dogs yeah. all my life. You know, they What's become the breed of that dog you, those dogs you have? Golden Doodles. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what they are. See, I, I used to laugh at people that said that. I get it now. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it used to just so, be like, I would just be like, no way. Yeah. Like you said, they become a part of you. You yeah. expect them to be right there when you're doing something. Or I just never something. was like a dog person. Um, I don't dislike them, but yeah, I never same. was like, yeah, I, was, yeah. I, I can go to someone's house. If a dog rolls up on me, I'll pet your dog. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to like push it off me and be like, get I mean, out of here. The thing I like about cats, especially where I live, is they kill stuff. I have a bunch. I've never, knock on wood, had like a big spider in my house, and I'm yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Because they kill them. They kill mice. Yeah. And they're pretty self-sufficient. Like, they just they open just the chill. door. They go running out and do whatever they want to do, yeah, and then they, they come chill. back and until they don't come back. And that was what Happy happened. Easter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I'm just thinking about where's the pet cemetery from here? I need to call Stephen King up, see where that is. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it's right off the uh, exit there, <laughs> off of 35 when you go down on 34. Yeah. Is it really? To go to, win, to, go yeah. to Winfield, well, yeah. Well, good thing is I can still know where to get her. <laughs> yeah. get, get, her get, line out. get that line out again. There's a little pond there. No, like, oh, throw man. her in that pond. Yeah. So. No, but uh, yeah, that was my Sunday. Throw her in that pond. <laughs> Or a transporter attempt, down attempt there. to. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say you threw her and you didn't get it far enough and, and it, it hit, just the, hit, the, hit the, rocks. the rocks. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought he was going to say <laughs> too. Oh, my, my wall dropped straight down oh, okay. to the river. I got no none of that, but um, but yeah, dude. Uh, was, All right. And now I'm stuck with a cat that I hate. So I just like, picture. I, I literally looked at her. Just like, why couldn't that have been you? Like why? <laughs> that cat will die the day after I do. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're gonna end on that. Uh, there I mean, we go. I, well, it was either begin with that or no, end with that. It's a story that we do have uh, old. some other things going on this week. Dirty birds are playing. There we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's talk some. That season birds. starts, and okay. uh, Thursday, Taco Bell's right? bringing back the Mexican pizza. Oh, okay. Dirty birds, big action. fan, huh? Yeah. 
By the way, my I got lunch by at one thirty. So our my softball game just got PPD. Okay, so, so I won't be sitting no up all today. Um, Good, I don't have to go with you. St. Albans, South Charleston, for those who are interested in watching a couple two lost teams go at it, they will play next Monday. Okay. So there, there you, you go. go. At St. Albans. Yes. Probably 6 o'clock, I would assume. So I will go see South Charleston tomorrow play Capital. I need to write a little something on South Charleston. I haven't got to them yet, so there we go. All right. What do we think about the Dirty Birds? I don't know. You never know about that. Do they have they have been Bill Hatch yet? That's all I want to know. That's the only <laughs> thing I can, do. They <laughs> the hats with the bed bills. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any either. I did see where they I were like selling stuff, a bunch of the old power stuff. Oh really? I'd you like, gonna get it for studio? Yeah, I'd like to got some of that stuff. I don't know if anything's left. But. Oh yeah, yeah. I, bet. I, I, I love the new logo, the new colors, all of it. And I, I would love so it. buy a hat if they just had one that wasn't flat bill. I'm not doing that. It's not me. So no, the day like they it. get them, the day I'll go buy one. Yeah, I got to get me uh, something like a shirt or something this year. But our our Rick Farlow will be there on Thursday. It's opening day, right? Thursday or Wednesday? Wednesday. Well, they got to meet the team on Wednesday. Okay. So yeah, we'll we'll have Thursday. coverage for yeah. you there at uh, HD Media. That cool. By the way, awesome. Um, yeah, so we'll be there and we'll be at the spring game Saturday. Of course, we can talk more spring game Friday, right? Sure. Like yeah. The day before, um, we're going to try to get some guests lined up here in the next few mm-hmm. weeks too. But yeah. I just thought it was more important to share the story of my cat with you guys. Today. That was great. <laughs> yeah, Appreciate that it. Was great. I mean, it went great. I was yeah, just, that was thank awesome. you for sharing. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> today, today's also tax day, so if you haven't paid your taxes, oh, yeah, which right. is me, I've got to go pay them today. And it also marks the. 20th anniversary of me throwing up in front of a crowd of people in Parkersburg, too. Oh, yeah. Tax the, day every year. Had to double header at Parkersburg, and I tried snuffing a Big Mac for the first time at the same time. Good combo. Vomit it right in work, front of everybody. Didn't work out, and I have a bunch of guys I played with that still like to remind me every year that that happened. So. That's going to make you a braver <laughs> person after that. I have Just never. vomiting in front of like 20 strangers. I have what never, else could you, what else can make you feel uncomfortable? I have never tried dip since, and I've never tried Thousand Island dressing since. Can't. Like, you should be able to get up on stage in front of people after vomiting in front of 20 random people. Oh, it was more than 20. It was 100. Okay, 100 people. Yeah, and it, the way the wind was blowing, it was just sweeping oh, up, yeah. up into the stands, and it was. Uh, yeah. Great stories today, yeah. Ryan. <laughs> well, this is why I'm here, you know. All right, we'll close it I on that. I thought that was a better note than the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least that one's funny, right? Check out Ryan's uh, stuff. He's obviously covering softball right now and WVU. Yeah. Um, you're waiting on the spring game. You'll be up there Saturday. But, uh, but now that we're HD media, I can tell you we've got everything covered. Yeah. So Marshall, spring ball. Yeah, we've got everything. Prep baseball. We're going to hit a track meet this week, this Saturday at Hurricane, I believe. Okay, awesome. Um, we'll have the Dirty Birds taken care of for you. We're going to have a bunch of stuff. So make sure Websites. You, this check is out the so websites. so much easier just plugging the yeah. whole thing now. WVGazetteMail.com as well as uh, Herald-Dispatch. It's hard to say that, dot .com. Yeah, and we also have... You know, Lincoln Video County, you mentioned Lincoln County. Lincoln Journal's part of us now. We've got the Logan Banner, so we got you covered down south. There you go. And uh, we'll, of course, be doing this Mondays and Fridays. And it'll drop at 4 o'clock, thanks to Jack and all the hard work he does. Thank you yeah. to Video Productions as well. Uh, they've been a partner with us. They'll be uh, streaming our stuff, too. So check them out on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. All right, that does it for us today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the Brandon Lowe Show with Ryan Pritt. Thanks, guys.